VAP is what allows us to respond after mass violence. So I think we're familiar with the mass violence that occurred in Rochester Hills this past June. Yeah. Our VAP team was on the ground within hours providing support for that community. And the same is true of East Lansing and in Oxford. Wow. So I'm very passionate about it because VAP is entirely donation supported. We get no grant or uh, state or federal money for those programs, but they exist because we believe it's important to provide that support when and where it's needed most. That's that's really powerful. I know when you mentioned those three events, it sends a chill up my spine, as I'm sure it does many of our listeners too. Welcome back to The Rock Pod. I'm John Gay from Jagging Detroit Podcasts. I'm Lisa Bibby, your realtor with Century 21 Northland. We've talked about this in the podcast before. Mental health is so important, and we're so glad that it's being discussed in much wider space now. And that's why we're thrilled today to welcome back to the podcast, Ann Bradley. She is now with Common Ground. Welcome back, Ann. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Tell us, uh, for those who aren't familiar with Common Ground, about the organization and its mission. Our mission is to offer help, healing, and recovery to people in crisis. And our goal is to help people move from crisis to hope. And we do this by responding to crisis with trauma-informed programs. We provide safety and advocacy, and we help build communities of support for long-lasting recovery. And all of that is to say the short way that I say it is Common Ground does mental health crisis support and suicide prevention. That is our focus. And it's so phenomenal that you guys are there and we want to help spread the word because so many times people are struggling with their issues and they don't know who to turn to or who they can talk to. So knowing there's an organization like you guys available, they can literally just pick up the phone. It also sounds like you guys have some walk-in availability. So we have our in-person facility in Pontiac, our Resource and Crisis Center, and we have several programs there, including... Uh, Oasis, which is our crisis intervention area. So we work with people who walk in and need assistance, as well as with emergency departments, police stations. And a lot of times when someone is dealing with a psychiatric crisis, they probably don't need to be in the hospital, but there's very few places that they can go. And Oasis is what we think of as a, a step down from inpatient hospitalization. So we provide assistance and support for people in that moment of crisis to make sure that they're safe to themselves and others. Also within our Resource and Crisis Center, we have our Sober Support Unit, which is a 24-hour program. And people come, a lot of times they walk in through the doors of the Sober Support Unit and they leave to go into inpatient substance use treatment. And I think 96% of the people who come to sober support end up going to in-person substance use treatment. We also have our crisis residential unit, which is a longer term care area. People can stay up to 14 days. And again, we think of it as a step down program. So a lot of times folks will need a place to recover, to have a little bit of time before they go home or go back into a situation And the crisis residential unit provides that safe space for them to get a little bit more stable, take care of what needs to be taken care of. So those are our in-person programs that we house in our crisis and residential support. But we also have programs that are offered statewide via phone and via telemedicine. So many people know Common Ground as the hotline, the suicide and crisis hotline. And we've been doing that since 1971 when we were founded. Wow. Yeah. We do have several programs that operate within the community, but they're based out of the Resource and Crisis Center, uh, one of which is our mobile crisis response team. So we can go out to people's homes, to their schools, to their workplaces, sometimes also to the hospital emergency room and assist folks who are dealing with a crisis and they may not want to call the police, call 911 for whatever reason, we can respond to that. We have that throughout Oakland and through Genesee County. We also have our resource and crisis hub is uh, housed there. So uh, a lot of people know Common Ground for the resource and crisis hub. So Anne, can you give us the phone number that they could call if they need support? I absolutely can. We do have an 800 number. But before I give the 800 number, I'd like to encourage people to also save 
988. So you guys are familiar probably with 911. Yes. What you call when you have an emergency, 988 is a similar number. It was created federally a few years ago, and it's the crisis and suicide access line. In Michigan, Common Ground answers the 988 hotline throughout 76 of 83 Michigan counties. So through wow. most of Michigan, those 988 calls are being answered by Common Ground staff. And that's 24-7, 365, right? 24-7, 365. That's right. And it's available to anyone in Michigan. It's also available to anyone who's from Michigan but might be outside of the state. How it happens, you call in, they look at your area code, and you are linked with a person who works closest to your area code. So not only are you getting that emotional support, you're going to be able to talk to someone who's fairly local, who's familiar with the resources that are close to where you're from, where you're living. That's phenomenal. And able to link you up. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's a great program. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, even with support lines, if they call in, if you don't know what's available to them locally, you know, it may not be much of a help, but having somebody right there in your hometown that can say, hey, these are the resources available to you is fantastic. It definitely is. So yeah, so 988 is a big one, but we still operate our resource and crisis hub. And the number for that is 800 231-1127. And that is also 24-7, 365, as are most of our programs. Fantastic. And I've known you for a few years now, and I know what a big heart you have. I'm kind of curious how you yourself got involved with Common Ground. Believe it or not, I used to be a counselor. I have my master's in clinical psychology, and I worked for a time in different Detroit community mental health agencies. And I burned out, as you do, and started training myself in fundraising and marketing. And I was working a couple jobs, doing internships, and eventually got hired to do development full time. This is now my third job in development and fundraising. And it's a really perfect fit because not only am I getting to do what I love, I get to talk about something that is really important to me and to a lot of people I know, which is mental health treatment and suicide prevention, something that I think is on, it's on all of our minds, especially post-COVID. It's on everyone's mind. If there was one silver lining that came out of COVID, it was increased awareness of mental health, I think, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's something I never thought we would be talking about as much as we are and with as little stigma as we are. So it's very exciting. I love that we're actually talking about it and people can admit to, hey, Therapy is a good thing. Having resources is a good thing. And there's help if you are in the middle of a crisis. Now, Anne, you had mentioned fundraising. Do you want to talk to us a little bit more? So Birmingham Street Art Fair is coming up and it is their 50th anniversary. And you guys are going to be doing a silent auction. Can you tell us more about that? The Birmingham Street Art Fair, actually, this is their 50th year, 50th anniversary. So it's a very big year for Birmingham Street Art Fair. And Common Ground has been one of their charitable partners for many years. Don't ask me how many. It's before my time. <laughs> but we are so pleased to be back at the Birmingham Street Art Fair. That's the last weekend in September. It's September 28th and 29th. And not only is Common Ground so grateful to receive donations from the Street Art Fair, from their admissions, from their organization, but the artists have generously donated pieces. Most artists in the fair donate pieces to a on-site silent auction that Common Ground runs, and all proceeds go to benefit our programs and services. So that is the last weekend of September. And it, I did say on site, but we also have an online component. So if you follow us on social media, you can still put in a bid if you really want to win some art for yourself or someone you love. They make great gifts. Spoken like a true development person. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. One of the main reasons we're having you on now is to talk about the big gala that you have coming up on October 18th. What can you tell us about that? Celebration of Hope is happening Friday, October 18th. It's at the Birmingham Community House. And the funds raised as part of Celebration of Hope go to support the Common Ground programs and services that are supported through donations. And it also fills in some cracks. Anyone who's worked with contracts or grants knows that there's often things people need. There are services that are required that may not be funded by the money that you're getting there. So it's important that we have funds to call upon. When, when someone comes in and needs help, 
it is right in our mission statement that no one is turned away. Mm. We don't turn anyone away, but to not turn them away, we need a pool of funds we can pull from so we can still pay for our staff. We can still get them the health they need. And it is very important that we continue to donate to causes like Common Ground. So how can our listeners get involved with the event? There's a couple different ways. We do have sponsorships and corporate partnerships available, not only for celebration, but certainly year round. But we have sponsorships at almost every budget level from $1,500 to $50,000. So any any level that people are interested in giving back and getting a little recognition or doing employee engagement and morale building, we can make that happen. The second way is they can come. They can register to attend Celebration of Hope. It's open to the public. And I would love to see the room just packed to the gills with people who are excited to talk about mental health treatment and changing the way that we uh, deal with crisis and suicide prevention in Michigan. Tickets are available individually or they're available by table. And that's a really fun night, a great time to come. We're going to have a silent auction there as well as live entertainment. And there might even be a celebrity or two. Oh, a little teaser. Okay. Little teaser, not going to say anything more than that. That's fine. And the last, of course, is just to make a donation. Regardless of whether you are giving $10 or 10000 every single dollar is valuable and helps us complete our mission to help people move from crisis to hope. I said it before, I'll say it again, every little bit counts and is valuable. And I know myself, I give on a monthly basis, I give 10 bucks a month. And even that, I feel, is making a big difference. So I encourage anyone, regardless of amount, to consider becoming a donor or even a monthly sustaining donor to become a friend of Common Ground. So, Anne, I love hearing about all these opportunities. And on your website, there's also other volunteer opportunities available. Can you briefly talk about those? We have a lot of volunteer opportunities. Often they're not working directly with people who are impacted because of the nature of our work. We come in at the moment of crisis, which is wonderful because that's when people need assistance. But it also means most of our callers and most of the individuals we serve are by nature short-term service. So there's not a lot of opportunity to interact with the folks who are calling common ground in a moment of crisis. But we do have opportunities to volunteer as part of our resource and crisis hub And we also have opportunities to serve in an administrative capacity, not to make it about me, but we also have opportunities to do volunteer leadership, be part of our event steering committees. We have development committees that folks can be a part of. And there's often task force opportunities where we bring in not only people from the board, but people in the community who value mental health treatment and want to use their expertise and skills, give back, and also provide some guidance in creating systems that are going to be most helpful to the most people. And before we wrap up with you, I know you have so many programs. What else do you want to cover before we start to wrap things up? Of course, we have programs and I can only barely brush the surface. So I encourage anyone interested to visit our website, commongroundhelps.org to learn more about all of our programs. But the two I'm most excited to tell you about, the first is our Virtual Behavioral Health Urgent Care, or BHUC, because that's a mouthful. That is a virtual telemedicine service. And you think about going to the urgent care versus going to the doctor. A lot of times it's a short-term issue. You're looking for help without the wait, or maybe you are out of town or your doctor doesn't return your call or they're out of town. Virtual behavioral health urgent care exists as a bridge for the same type of treatment for behavioral health treatment. So a lot of the time it's people who are dealing with an issue and they don't know who to call as what you mentioned. They might not be ready to call 988 or to call the suicide hotline, but they know something's wrong. So they are connected. I think our average is under five minutes with a master's level clinician and a prescriber, a PA, who can not only provide emotional support, but perhaps provide bridge medications to ensure that people are not going without meds, even if they are currently without a therapist or psychiatrist in the short term. The other program that I really love is our victims assistance programs, and that encompasses a wide range of things. But we will help anyone who is the victim of any violent crime 
It's the only program that I know of in the state that does such a thing. Most programs are crime specific. They're focused on domestic violence or they're focused specifically on human trafficking. And we will, of course, provide assistance for those things as well. But we also can help folks who have been the victim of a homicide attempt, of attempted robbery. Mm. If someone in their family uh, has been impacted by suicide or homicide. And VAP is what allows us to respond after mass violence events. So I think we're familiar with the mass violence that occurred in Rochester Hills this past June. Yeah. Our VAP team was on the ground within hours wow. providing support for that community. And the same is true of East Lansing and in Oxford. Wow. So I'm very passionate about it because VAP is entirely donation supported. We get no grant or uh, state or federal money for those programs, but they exist because we believe it's important to provide that support when and where it's needed most. That's that's really powerful. I know when you mentioned those three events, it sends a chill up my spine, as I'm sure it does many of our listeners too. Yeah, well, we're so grateful for you guys being able to support the communities in the way that you do and show up through all of these things that are funded by the people that are living there in the community. So, Anna, now we're going to switch things up a little bit, and it is now time for our fishbowl question of the day. Oh, boy. Here we go. Where John's going to pull a totally random question. All right. Let's, John? Let's see here, Ann. All right. Aside from your work, which you are very passionate about, what is something you have learned in the last week? Oh, my goodness. I am embarrassingly full of trivia. Ooh, I love trivia. I do as well. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Um, I did see something this morning on TikTok, so it must be true. But I heard that there is a kind of frog that uses its knuckles as wolverine claws to defend itself. Wait, what? Like it will break its knuckles and use them as wolverine claws. No way. <laughs> right? Isn't that cool? Oh, my gosh. I love it. I don't know the name of it, but uh, that's what I, I heard. They were interviewing biology PhDs to say, like, what's the coolest biology fact? And I thought that was pretty awesome. So that's what's top of mind. Timely with the uh, movie out as we record this, too. <laughs> I suppose it is, right? Bare knuckle toad boxing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Ann, thank you again for coming on. And we're going to put all the uh, links for Common Ground in the show notes. But real quick website again, any other content info you want to share? Absolutely. The website is commongroundhelps.org. And we're also on social media at Common Ground Helps. And uh, I would encourage you to check out the Celebration of Hope Gala. Sometimes mental health is very serious to talk about. It's a serious subject, but Celebration of Hope is exactly that. It's a celebration, and we should all be very excited about where we're going, the progress we've made, and, and all the cool things that are going on. So I encourage you to get involved. We're happy to, to be part of the community, and we want you to be part of it, too. Oh, I love that so much. And that is probably one of the most powerful words, hope. Hope. My name is Lisa Bibby, and I'm a realtor with Century 21 Northland. I put the real back in Realtor, and we want you to love where you live. Questions about buying or selling your home? Call my cell at 248-981-3610. My website is soldbylisab.com, and you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Sold by Lisa B. And I am John Gay from Jagging Detroit Podcast. If you have any questions about podcasts or want help creating a podcast for yourself or your business or your organization that sounds like this one right here, you can find me at jagindetroit.com or on social at jagindetroit. This has been The Rock Pod, produced for the Royal Oak, Michigan Chamber of Commerce. For more information about the Royal Oak Chamber, how to get involved in our many, many events, you can visit royaloakchamber.com. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>